Imagine a town being named after musical instruments played there. So much so, the name stuck. We'll learn about it next on Ghost Towns and More. About 45 miles east of Sacramento, California, lies a quiet little hamlet nestled in the lush hills of Amador County. When the frenzied gold rush brought countless thousands of treasure seekers pouring into the area in about 1850, prospectors discovered gold in the nearby creek beds and set up camp. Fiddletown supposedly started in 1848 with a group of miners from Missouri who spent their spare time fiddling. And a lot of the mining camps had whimsical nicknames, and this one was Fiddletown. By 1854, the new town had over 2,000 residents and had acquired a name that was very unusual for a gold rush town. Various stories have survived through the years, but all describe some early residents who were proficient with playing the fiddle when the creeks ran dry. Others claim that some folks were just fiddling around, but either way, that name remained as the town grew. Although Fiddletown remained comparatively small to other gold rush mining towns, with only placer mining available, it sustained a good economy as a major trading center for other mining camps and towns in the county. Chinese immigrants flocked to the town in search of better opportunities, and by 1878, Fiddletown had the second largest Chinese population in California. They established businesses such as the Fu Key General Store, the Chinese Gambling Hall, and the Chu Key Grocery Store, the buildings of which still stand today. When placer mining began to play out, the reason for staying in Fiddletown went with it, and a population decline began in 1878. Now about that same time, a resident named Columbus Allen Purinton became dissatisfied with the name of the town. Well, during his public service in San Francisco and Sacramento, he was embarrassed to be known as the man from Fiddletown among his contemporaries. In uh, 1870s, it was changed to Olita um, instigated by a well-to-do resident that didn't like signing into a San Francisco hotel as being from Fiddletown. Well, the bill passed and the governor's signature officially changed the name to Olita, but it wasn't to last. By 1932, residents of the town petitioned the postmaster with only 64 signatures to have the name changed back. And so on July 1st, 1932, Fiddletown had its original name restored. As part of the homecoming celebration during the Depression, they voted to change it back and restore the name to Fiddletown. Since its beginning, Fiddletown personified a happy town where people seemed content, at least during the heydays, with restaurants, dance halls, public baths, 20 different stores, a school, a post office, and a church. It was a boom town when, when uh, at the beginning of the gold rush. There was always gold here, especially in some of the, the uh, the smaller mining camps around the outside, American Hill, uh, Suckertown, 
uh, the, and, but they were short-lived flash in the pan. Uh, but Fiddletown uh, hung in there. At one time, I think there were three large hotels in town, bars, di different businesses. Uh, no, no open businesses in, in Fiddletown anymore except a candy shop. Despite the amicable environment, the Chinese suffered discrimination wherever they went. Starting in 1875, the United States Page Act sought to ban Chinese women from entering the United States under the mistaken assumption that all of them were prostitutes, but the ulterior motive was to prevent Chinese from having families. Then in 1882, U.S. President Chester A. Arthur signed the Chinese Exclusion Act, providing a 10-year moratorium on Chinese labor immigration and furthermore prevented Chinese from becoming naturalized citizens. Well, things got worse for the Chinese citizens of Fiddletown. In 1884, Fiddletown's Chinatown was destroyed by arson and anti-Chinese clubs in surrounding towns throughout the county perpetuated hostile sentiments against anyone of Asian descent. There were those who endured the ill will against them and remained. The Chu Key store was passed down to its last owner, Jimmy Chow, who passed away in 1965 and is the only Chinese resident buried in the Fiddletown Cemetery. He was um, a carpenter and uh, he did a lot of work around town. I've been told there's a lot of things around town built by Jimmy Chow. Across from the cemetery is the old schoolhouse which operated from 1852 to 1955 for students up to the 8th grade and the old bell from that era still remains in the tower. The community center is unmistakable in the middle of town where a giant fiddle is displayed on the front of the building. With the exodus of the boom and bust of transient gold seekers, Fiddletown, with its Mediterranean-style weather and comfy climate, maintained its place nestled in the lush rolling green hills in Amador County, where just a minority of people still call it home. The weather here is awfully great, too. It's uh, probably this part of California is the best weather in the world. Doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold, not too much rain, not too many bugs. All the best. Truly a veritable ghost of its former self, many of the abandoned and historic buildings still stand. Fiddletown is a calm, peaceful, and quiet place to visit and appreciate the beauty that has always been a historic part of this remarkable place.